Welcome to another edition of Mr. Fire Encounters where I bring you the talented and the most innovative here in Charleston. But now I'm in Orangeburg, the lovely Orangeburg that has no Walmart but a lot of cookouts. I'm sorry, excuse me, two Walmarts now. She let me know already. And today I have for me the lovely, the beautiful, and the most innovative, intriguing, business minded woman ever, Ms. Dejan T. Introduce yourself to the people for me, please. What's up, you guys? I'm Dejan T, owner of Dejan T Management. Um, <clears throat> we working, we working. I got a whole team. I got six people up under me. I'm from Orangeburg, South Carolina, and I'm big lit. Enjoy. Now, right now, we are on the area that she calls the porch, because this is where she does most of her her lives, her creativity. This is where she basically does the work at. Is out here in the country. Ain't nothing going on here. Nope. I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen a deer yet, but I'm pretty sure I might hit one on the way back. So, y'all pray for me as I get my way back to Charleston. Um, this is this has been planned since last week. This interview has been planned for about two weeks now in advance, but me and her stay busy. Hopefully, in the future, I get to work with her. So, Miss Dejan, and I'm saying it right, right? You are. Miss Dejan. Um, you told me that you went to Coastal Carolina. Correct. So, what made you go there? Well, okay, so I'm gonna give you the honest. I'm just gonna let you know now, ain't no filter. So, um, coming That's good. <laughs> I just make sure that on the YouTube settings we got not for kids. Gotcha. Right. So, um, I graduated high school um, in December of 2008. I graduated a little early. I was already enrolled at Denmark Technical College okay. when I was in 11th grade. So, I was a full time college student, full time high school student. Um, I applied. I can't lie to every school in the state of South Carolina because I was like, I had a 3.5. Um, I was an athlete, like I had a lot going on. So I was just like, it's no way I'm gonna get denied. So I applied everywhere. My heart was set on USC or UGA. Well, I was in um, the Upper Bound program, and you know, with that program, they okay. send out um, the fee waivers or whatever when you're applying to colleges. So boom. His decision day for UGA and USC, it's on my birthday in 2009, you feel me? So I'm super excited, like, yeah, I'm about to be a bulldog or a gay cop. Mail comes, my mama come in the house with both of the envelopes, so I'm like, this is it. I open the envelope and tell me why Up About never sent my fee waivers. They did the same thing to me, don't worry. So I did not get accepted to either of the schools my heart was set on. Instead, they had it listed that I was going to go to Claflin, which was not true. So um, I went back to school, I was upset, I was talking to my best friend, and she was like, yeah, I'm going to Coastal. And I was like, Coastal, what's that? Like, I'd never even heard of the school before. So One I'm of like, the premier party schools in South Carolina. Say that, it's not college, it's Coastal. <laughs> So, you know, she was like, yeah, I'm going to Coastal. And I'm like, what's that? Where's that? And she was like, Myrtle Beach. And I was like, I don't think I applied. I'm about to apply. So I applied. I got accepted. They gave me a little bit of money to come down from all my accolades. And I went down there, finished that program in sociology in about two years. And I was out of there. So as you see, she got hood, country, and education. Because <laughs> she used that word accolades very nicely. <laughs> now, what was your major? Again, you said Sociology. So sociology. So what did you actually have planned? Um, I honestly kind of grew up with those those cliche child dreams. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a doctor. Those types of things. Like, I've always been a nerd. Like, growing up, I would go hide in the closet or in my bathroom and read a book. And everybody be in the house be looking for me. And I'm like, you know, I'm in the closet. Don't find me, please. So she's like Cinderella. <laughs> Brandy Cinderella come out in my own little corner. Okay. Like, I wasn't with it. So, like, you know, I wanted to do, I always wanted to be a change agent. I knew that I wanted to do something that would change the world. I've always been a part of music. Like, everybody around me is in music. Um, at the age of 12, I was actually in the studio myself with our church choir or whatever. So it was always there, so to speak. But then, like, I had, like, different different family things that happened along the way. And it kind of made me just want to tune into people's behaviors. I felt like if I could understand the way people think, if I could understand why they do some of the things that they do, I could probably do more for the people around me to benefit them and myself. So when I went to Coastal, I got the dopest sociology teachers who put, up a, put us up to the dumbest stuff just to see how people responded, and I fell in love. So I finished that off, and then I went back to Ori Georgetown and did some um, criminal law classes and um, the forensic analysis classes just because I always tell people, like, the most powerful thing about a black person is knowing your rights, knowing your laws. It ain't nothing they can stop you from when you know what you're talking about. So I went back and I got that little bit of studying up under me and now 
I'm just here. I was um, getting my master's while I'm going to finish it, but I've been getting my master's in social work. But when this music thing came about, it was just like a gut feel, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, this computer ain't where you're supposed to be right now. Like, it's a whole world out there waiting for you. Go get it. So, that's how I ended up here from being a sociologist. <laughs> I mean, I actually feel that though because in the start, I was in the band playing music and then I just got into a TV studio at school and I just got, I just found the talent to do videos. Now, I'm doing this, but I'm also a program manager for a disability board. So oh, I work with special needs and I kind of found out my family has a history about working with special needs. So it just came well, to me. You see how energy works? <laughs> Um, that's actually what I do before I decided to step down from an executive position within the state working in the mental health system. Um, I was actually working for the South Carolina Department of Mental Health. I was a program coordinator for a new program that came about. Um, I've worked in the prison system. I have worked in, <laughs> I've worked in the state psychiatric wards. Um, I'm ABA therapist. Like I real life do it all because I just feel like it's no way people can just sit back and talk about everything in the world that has to change instead of just jumping out there and do it. You know, and then people love to leave our area to go make a change. That's not benefiting nobody if everybody's leaving to go change somebody else's life. What actually brought you to do, well, you, you explained you always been in the studio, so what really brought you to business management, to managing over six people and stuff like that, and actually getting concerts and venues out and everything like that? Okay, so. Here's the story of how Lil Gordon drug me into being a manager. Um, <laughs> I sit back, y'all enjoys this. So, um, like I've always been a pretty cool person. Like I said, I played a lot of sports and stuff, so I know a lot of people from a lot of different places. Mm -hmm. And um, it just kind of always worked. Like there's nowhere I can go without somebody saying, hey, hey. So my brother just was kind of like, you know, you need to like step out here, like do this. Because when I first came back home, I did like a scholarship gala and stuff like that. And I wanted to bring it to this area, but not a lot of people were really vibing with it because around here it's more so about the club scene. It's more so about who you know, getting put on the flyers and stuff like that. And I'm just like, you know, can y'all support this too? Like I want to send y'all kids to college, but they weren't really rocking with it. So I told my brother one day, I said, look, I'm going to pop out. I'm gonna pop out on the scene. Everybody keeps saying I need to come to the party, I need to come to the club and show some support and I'll get the same report, you know, support in return. I said, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try their bluff. I'm gonna try the theory. So I started popping out, going to the parties and stuff, and the more that I started going to the different parties and supporting different DJs and different promoters and stuff like that, um, things started to form up. People started actually asking me to be on flyers and stuff. So, um, Lil Gordon dropped the track. We're sitting down talking or whatever because Dejan is actually my middle name. Um, my that was actually my Facebook name. When I was working at the prison, a lot of inmates were finding me with my real name. So the name Dejan T actually came from me trying to hide my identity on social media. So then um, one day my brother came in the house and he was like, "Yo, you ain't got no choice no more. Like you my manager now." And I was like, "You can't make me." He was like, "Yes, I can." I was like, well, "What's gonna be my name? I don't have a name. Like I don't even know what I'm doing." He was like, "Yeah, it is. It's Dejan T. I already put it in a song." So <laughs> that's how Dejan T management really actually came about. Um, Lil Gordon and Freeport Donnie, who's also signed to MMR, were the first two artists that I signed. Um, I worked with a lot of different people leading up to the event. Like shout out to my boys at LB with LBS Two Turn Jay Gooch. He actually brought me into a situation at um, a little small place out here in Orangeburg called Holly's, where every Thursday we would do um, artist contests. We would have artists come from all over the place. They would do their thing on the stage. Somebody went home with a hundred dollars every Thursday until we couldn't do it anymore um, and from there like I just started seeing a lot you know the good the bad the ugly everything on the back side of this and I was just kind of like I don't like that I don't like that either that's not right I like this we can do something with this and from there it just kind of grew and grew and grew like before I even realized I was a manager I had people asking me to manage them and it didn't really come full circle for me until People began to reach out to me to just send music every day, sending me music, asking me questions, asking me if I could manage them, if I could book them for this, if I could do that. That's when I realized what was really in the palm of my hands, and I began to really actually put it on paper and take it seriously. A year ago, if we were right here in Orangeburg doing everything between Orangeburg and Columbia. Six months in, we done been to Miami, Jacksonville, North Carolina, <laughs> Georgia, like we done did about six different states. And then coming into this new year, one of my short-term goals was to be nominated for the South Carolina Underground Music Awards. I didn't want to go as a guest anymore. I wanted to be a nominee. That was my goal last year. This year, we're going in with 13 nominations and our own South by Southwest stage. So okay. 
it's, it's, it's been the progression. Um, I'm a results driven type of person. So anytime I'm doing anything, if I can see the physical results from it and I can see where I'm progressing, I'm going to keep at it. Because if it's doing numbers this way, then I know it's benefiting somebody. Whether it's me or not, it's my passion. So to hear a thank you and I'm doing well is enough for me. So now, now some of y'all probably heard this saying, saying from, from all my previous shows, the South Carolina Music, Underground Music Awards. I did not know this existed until this year. Oh yeah, she's 10 years strong with it. Okay, so, so now, remember, look this up for you can make sure you place your votes because for Miss Deja T and also for Meeting of the Minds, Long Time Entertainment, everybody who's been on the show because we have to support everybody because one thing about this show that I keep promoting is make sure you expose yourself because if you wait for somebody else to discover you, you will be waiting a long time. How long have you actually been doing this? Um, November, no, October 23rd marked the year. So okay. we're we're going into year two right now pretty strong. So, as you can see already, damn, that's a very short time. And she's already a big name for, for herself. So how many artists do you have all around? Like, I'm pretty sure you have some in Charleston, right? I, I believe. Um, I work with a lot of different people out of Charleston. Um, my boy Trouble, um, his whole crew, YPJ Grounds, um, Lunny, all those guys. I've been kind of back and forth with them for years. Um, they are directly up under my um, homeboy, but they've actually come up and done two of my shows. Um, I did one was in Columbia and then the other one was down here in Orangeburg. But the actual six artists that are signed to me are, to make sure I don't forget my kids, Lil Gordon, The Only Plug, Freeport Donnie, Rock Nate, Fame Oliver, Alexia Rose. And then I have a producer who's actually in Greenville. Um, his name is 97. And then we have our own photographer. Her name is Flutter Effect. The whole team is nominated for awards this year for the South Carolina Underground Music Awards. Well, I'm not trying to push nothing, but hopefully one day you hire me. Uh, <laughs> he's, oh, he's definitely going to work. We're definitely going to work. Now, so, how do you actually met? For some of you who don't know, she does have kids. And I see no ring on the finger, but you know. No, no ring. So, like I said so far, come correct if, if, if you're going to try. <laughs> but how do you manage motherhood and also your business? Um, I'm honest with my kids. That's the the main thing behind it. Um, I get up in the morning, I get them dressed for school, get them off to school, and when I get back home, I'm either clocking in to my little nine to five that I work. Or I'm hitting the road going to do something extra. I'm back home by the time they get out of school. Um, I have a really, really dope support system. Their godmothers, their grandparents, their father, they're all really, really active in their lives. So anytime I have to step away to make something happen, they know. Like if I'm getting off work and I'm getting dressed, the question is not, Mommy, where are you going? Or crying. The question is, Mommy, you got a show tonight? Oh, you and Uncle Booby better do good. Like I so you know, I, I keep it really honest with them. Like I let them know like this is what mommy's doing. Like I know sometimes y'all might get sick of me not being in the bed with you at night, but just know soon enough it's it's really gonna pay off. So they understand and they're lovers of music too. So we're in the house and we're listening to different tracks, trying to figure out what we're gonna release and different stuff like that. My kids and they're helping us choose, jumping through the house with their microphone and their guitar and they get with the program too. So basically you started started your own family business. You can say that in some way, yeah. yeah. Nah, that's a great thing right there. Yeah. Um, have, do you do any of the, of the technological part in this or no? Um, so the only technical stuff I do is everything on the computer that ain't the music. <laughs> um, oh, and she makes the spreadsheets. She right. makes some the contracts. I do the contracts. I do all the distribution, um, platform distribution. Yeah. I do the promo. If we need YouTube drops, I'm doing the YouTube drops. Um, if it's time to put together promo for a single or a video or anything, you know, that's why I'm like, my babies are spoiled. I call them my babies because it's not, um, it's not a service. I don't charge my team any monthly fees or anything. I get paid when they get paid. And that's my motivation because in order for you to get paid, I got to do my job. So if I want to get picky, I got to do my job. You know? Now, most people do, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> most people do need to learn more that, that business tactic right there because for me, it's basically, I'm going to do this work for you, but don't pay me till after I'm finished. Exactly. Now, there are sometimes I do want to get paid up front, but also, I hold it because I want to make sure they like the product before I do anything. Um, now, when it comes to you doing this, what is your like rating so far? Like, people love you right now. What's going on? 
Like, where's your, in other words, where's your following at? Just, just the Orangeburg, just the South Carolina, East Coast, West Coast, what's going um, on? These are the questions that trip me up the most. Because Go ahead. I, I'm, I'm still getting used to and figuring it out. Um, so far, I'm from Orangeburg, but my biggest following is honestly out of Columbia. I have a really, really huge following in Colombia to the point where I can leave the state and say I got something going on and all of Colombia is coming with me. Um, Orangeburg is finally starting to really grasp on to what it is that I do. Because sadly enough, your hometown don't really Support back you, you until they see you there. Exactly. And you know, ain't no diss to my hometown because I love it. But I want it now that I've shown them what I'm capable of. I'm just hoping that they continue to, to grasp onto the ladder and hold it while we climb it so everybody can get to the top. Like the best thing, like the forgotten artist said, Mike Schultz. Back then, they didn't love me. Now I'm hot, they all love me. And I know that sounds cliche and lame, but I don't care. <laughs> it's true though. Um, look, Gordon been out here for a long, long time, and I can honestly say he hasn't had as many bookings in our city than he has everywhere else. Now, that's one sad thing I really hate about our state, because as some of you know, like I'm showing right now, Bethune Cutman and Days on the Beach. When I left South Carolina in 2007, local artists said I only knew was Tim Dino and Molly Mar. Then, when I entered that state line of Florida, That's all, you listen to. all you got is they have an actual local radio station where it plays local artists. Nothing else. Nothing else. <laughs> like, some of y'all might just know Bar Greasy right now. But, Bar Greasy been out for a long time and Y'all hear nice and slow all the time. Oh, you're like, oh, that's my shit. But technically, that song been out for a minute. And he has some other tracks that been very hot. Now, this other group like Grime Mode that people just don't know and kind of find out. One thing I can say is that other, sti other states, they support their people. They do. They really like, do. Ludacris, he's a mainstream now, but he was a radio host that literally promoted only local music. And he did that push himself and everybody else around. Yeah, like, so anybody who's big in South Carolina, please do this for everybody else. Support your local talent. Start waiting for those big names to come out and they're like, oh, oh, this hot, this hot. I, I do them back then. Oh, I went to school with them. Oh, I yeah. said, okay, so what was that support when we tried to pack out? Home? Exactly. Like, that whole saying of, I know them back then, it's played out now. Yeah, you probably know me in high school, but you didn't support me. Right. And see the way my mission is set up, like my whole goal is to change that. The SC, the SC Indie Grind was truly created to actually bridge the state. Um, when I moved up to Dillon, South Carolina, I realized that these artists don't know each other exists. Prime example, um, <clears throat> we, my kids, uh, people, they own some venues up in the PD area, and we did an event one day, and. Um, I dropped um, Ye Long by Deezy Me Duck. Now, if you drop that anywhere around here, whole club going crazy, you're going to catch a few free Deezy hoes somewhere in the club. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the thing. You drop a Deezy track, it's free Deezy ho. Like, that's, that's you know, that's that's the thing in the 803. Um, I dropped the track. You know, I'm excited because that's one of my favorite songs. And nobody else in the venue knew the song. So I'm like, hold up. This song done reached well over a million on every platform, including YouTube, and he's from right here in our state. Y'all really don't know who this is? So that's when the whole, nah, but you ever heard of Trap Dickie? And I was like, dang, nah, I ain't never heard of him before. So it was like an exchange of music right there in the middle of the club because at that point I understood Y'all don't know half of these people. Like even like you brought up Pacino Dino. That's one of my favorite SC artists. You feel me? Him, Mr. Taylor, everybody that recorded at Twin D, all of that. Like I'm familiar with all of that down there. You know what I'm saying? So and, and that's and, but that's really is the sad part because Marty Mom been out since my like middle school. I'm about to say way too out there. And like this weekend for Atlanta Hunter Battle of the Bands. They, all my people from Florida, when I played the music inside, the only person who was like jamming in the car was somebody who came from Charleston. Right. But all my Florida people who was in the car with me was like, oh, I like this. Yeah. <laughs> and when I played Baby Mama Real, my homeboy was like, you trying to, you trying to make a joke towards me? Like, no, no, man. Just like, but they listen to me like, I like this they shit. High. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing, like, but so far. In Florida, on that hurt, and yes, I speak a lot about Florida. Shut up. <laughs> um, but in Florida, 
the most people talk about soccer fun is probably a uh, Charleston tea. <laughs> um, a seafood, Southern hospitality, Justine's Kitchen, and the Chino Dino. And they only know like a few songs from them. Now that is sad, especially from a state that, I'm sorry to say, we all a very popular state. We're known as the story city. Charleston is known as the holy city. We have a church on every corner. People come there just to visit us, just to get married. Myrtle Beach is the most visited yeah. city in America. It is, like. And that's a fact. We <laughs> have a rock. City in America. We have a rock hard cafe and a wax museum by Ripley's, believe it or not. Well, see, hold up now, let me throw Orange Burger in there too, cause you know, it's only two McDonald's signs in the world that spin and we got one. I just want to throw that in there cause he talking about all this chops. <laughs> we talking about baby shit and she's talking about McDonald's. I want y'all to recognize I, I, I that. I had to throw that Orange Burger two piece in there now. Like <laughs> She could have said sucking line of state 101. She could have said the Roy. Knows. She could say said the Roy. She could say. Well, uh, I mean, if we're gonna talk about the Roy, then you in Roy territory. He actually went to the high school that I graduated from. You feel me? Like a lot of people feel like that's just a dance that Storm no. That's a real person. That was actually his football celebration dance. Oh, and that's by the way, Roy is down in down south too. Yeah, he's right here. That. He's from but, Orangeburg, but, South Carolina. But, and he's but, still here. But that song is <laughs> in, in Atlanta. It's everywhere. The song's in Atlanta. It's right everywhere. Now. So. It's sad that all local artists will have to leave out of out, out, out their hometown to get, get support. Like, prime example, a lot of people don't know. Like, the very first actual female group, legit female group, came from South Carolina. It was the group that Angie Stone was in. And people, a lot of people still don't even exactly. realize that Angie Stone is from right here in South Carolina. Viola Davis is from 15 minutes down the street. Even what's Buddy name that played in Black Panther? All of that is South Carolina. Yeah, Chadwick Boseman. All of that. Yeah. South Carolina. You He's know what South I'm saying? It's, it's, a, it's a lot of stuff out here that, that it's within our grasp. Only people, only thing people know about, about South Carolina is that, oh, Bill Murray lives here in Charleston. I, I don't see Bill Murray like probably like 10 times since I've been in high school working at Piggly Wiggly on <laughs> Meeting Street. And I'm not gonna lie, he's a great tipper. Right. When, when you carry out the groceries, <laughs> He gummed it and he signed autographs for everybody and he's he's a very nice guy. He's right. not one of those celebrities like don't touch me. Right. Leave me alone. I am Bill Murray. Like, no. He he actually humble. speaks to everybody. He's very humble, but that's the only thing that people really know around Charles. Oh, Bill Murray lives here. And that the rubber dogs is owned by the Yankees. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff like even from even just in Orangeburg like from the Orangeburg massacre and the rich history that's happened right here in Orangeburg that were change agents of you know what I'm saying the whole culture in the south to start with it's a lot of things around here that, that factor into a lot of what happens around here and I really feel like honestly the biggest challenge in the city I'm in right now it's not that people don't have the drive it's that they don't necessarily have someone who's guiding them in the right direction you know what I'm saying just like I feel about work people love to call people lazy in this area oh the unemployment rate is so low the truth about it is it's a lot of niggas out here that want to work they just ain't got no car to get there and we don't provide public transportation to help with that we don't have the hood ubers that pop up and be like bro you trying to go to work today you know what i'm saying like we don't we don't have a lot of that going on so we have a lot of missed opportunities in orangeburg so my whole purpose of bringing the sc indie grind was to fulfill that purpose now your brother what's his name i'm sorry Lil gordon Lil gordon other than him because you already say he's your, he's one of your support systems. Who else who else helps you out or supports you? Basically, who made you get that drive that you have today? Ooh, Lord, it's a lot of people I can think for that. Let's go as far back to my choir more. director, Miss um, Ophelia Darby. Not only was she my choir director, she's my best friend's mother. And on top of being my best friend's mother, she was also my band director. And on top of being my band director. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, time out. Y'all know I got to go in this now. <laughs> what instrument did you play? Oh, gosh. Um, I play clarinet, I play French horn, I play mellophone, and I started learning the trumpet and bass. You was cool for a second. You only cool for one instrument. <laughs> I play trombone. So, baritone, yeah. 
you could have just gone. Female love and a little, just a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get a little bit, but. But yeah, I'm actually. That's another thing. Like I'm, a, I'm actually a real musician, so it's different when I'm listening to music. Like I don't care nothing about that crazy junk you saying. Can you stay on beat? Like, do you understand the I mean, rhythm right now? Do you understand what's, 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 what can fit in this bar right here? Can you count that? You can fit a hundred words in this bar if you know how to count your pattern. You can do that. You know what I'm saying? No. I hear different things. It's really, it's, it's just really interesting in Orangeburg. Like, we've got a lot of different people. Um, as far as my support systems goes, when the Orangeburg community, you got um, Bacardi Rockstar, one of the biggest promoters that come out of Orangeburg. Bacardi is known everywhere. I'm talking about you leave the state and call Cardi name, they know who he is. Um, you got, I did my first event down here on my own at Club Atlantis, so shout out to them for supporting. Um, take it to the Columbia area, man. I'm talking about from my whole team to people like um, a good friend, Mercedes Harger, who would have Merc Nasty. That's my girl. She's an artist, but she's also a promoter. She also does events. And anytime I call her and say, I need you at this door, she's coming. Her and um, my little my little Susie called Michael Rail. They pop up whenever I need. <laughs> like they are they are one hell of a support system though. But my biggest, biggest, biggest two support systems would have to be um, one of my business partners out in Atlanta, South Carolina. He owns the showroom and he is the reason I started the SC in the grind because he gave me that platform and told me, you know, this is your home. Whenever you're ready to bring a show, whenever you're ready to do something different for the people, you got it. And he stuck to his word. And DJ Surplus. It's so much I can say about DJ Surplus. DJ Surplus has literally watched me when I was just coming in the club, handing him people music, saying, bro, you think you could sneak this in somewhere tonight? And instead of him just sneaking it in, he's going to play the whole track. He's going to call me to up there. He's going to go live. He's going to make sure that whoever music we're playing, we, they can see that we're playing their music. Like He's literally out here breaking these records for indie artists. Anytime I'm feeling down, I can go on Facebook, surplus is somewhat solar system lit, encouraging everybody that's around him. You know what I'm saying? So when I call DJ Surplus, excuse me, when I call DJ Surplus and I say, bro, I need you, it's never a question of, this is my feet. It's more so of a, let's get it. We already solar system lit, and I now, appreciate it. You name it. all these names, make sure you get them to come on the show now. Oh, that's no problem. <laughs> hey, Surplus, I love your show. He might, see, he do a little podcast weekly now up at um, B12 in Columbia. I could definitely try to plug you in with that because I know he would love this. Like, he he's definitely one that will give you a lot of insight into our indie scene around here as well. All the work that I do now, People can do that on their phone in less than a few minutes. Yeah. And I'm like, what And I didn't realize that until I started like actually being out on the scene with my photographer and we'd be riding and she'd be editing while we riding. I'm like, what you doing? She'd be like, you like this one? Nah, I don't like that filter. And I'm just like, are you on the editing your pictures? No, nah, don't fault her for that. I did that too. A lot of a lot of editors, you might be the client, you might like the work that we do, but we would never like our own work. No. Thank you for saying that. I cannot wait till she sees this Miss Flutter effect. Did you hear that? I finally got somebody else to vouch for me. Cause I tell her all, every time we're going through her work, she's like, uh, I don't like this one. Uh, I don't like this one. I was like, yo, that's that shot right there. Like that's now, it. And she how was, long like, has like she been it. doing it? Ooh, she's been at it for a good while. I can't actually like 15 years? call. Well, she ain't never 18. Okay, well, because I literally been doing this since I was 15. See, she ain't that. She ain't as old as that shit. Then she's been I started from like Windows Media Player. All the way to like, See, like Windows Video, Windows. I'm sorry, Windows she Movie Maker. In 2000. Uh, she ain't on that. <laughs> she had to go. If you born in 2000, then you don't know the original Green Power Ranger. I can't listen to you. Actually, <laughs> but but still, like I've been doing this for so long that all the work I ever done, I have never really liked none of my work. And like, those be the and main people be telling me, oh, I love this. I love it. Like people love the work I used to do on media. Windows Media Movie Maker, which is like a simple system, mm -hmm. like a slideshow. Thing. I can actually work that one. And people will say, how did you do that? And then, one thing I tell everybody who actually can show them what to do or teach them, I tell them honestly, you can teach, teach yourself, even with music. If you work on the basic system, like back in the day it was free loops, right. you work that basic system, and then when you got a little bit more money, go ahead, buy something that's more expensive. Like that's the same that's exact thing, the and then you, and then all you're doing is just, you know the basic now, but you just go ahead to something else. You upgrade it. Like right now, I'm working with, with Adobe. I don't work Final Cut, Movie Maker, Vegas, Cosmicus, and I mean, I've done some old time machines. Right. Working the news station, and it was like, 
I see now. You trying to make it big, you gonna buy something that's like, there, there are systems right now just programs that do the basic things that I'm doing right now. And they cost $3,000 right. for a subscription. Right. And, you're, and, and that $3,000 goes towards like three years and you have to pay that. Yep. <laughs> yep. There are a lot of artists around here in South Carolina that I really, really believe in. A lot of artists mm -hmm. that I want to work with. It's just the biggest thing in South Carolina that's hard to get people to understand is that when you go up on clout, when you build, when your whole music career is built on clout, your fall is going to be harder. Because when you go viral, when you get in it because you got money, you got one time to look broke, or you got one time to drop something that don't go viral, and now the people are looking at you, ah, oh, he trash, ah, oh, he this, ah, oh, he that. But when you start from those things that matter, like building a genuine fan base, um, getting people out there who actually know the words to your song, not just because your video got a thousand guns and money in it, but because you actually have good music, that's when you're fun. you don't fall. Because the minute you think you about to fall, you have a thousand people behind you like, yo, like this is my favorite track. You can always perform this over here versus, ah, uh, he broke. No, they ain't gonna do it, I'm telling you. So have you, have you ever had, had, had that time where you might like something this way, but your artist said, no, I want it this way? All the time. Now, do you veto that or do you just go with it? Um, I'm pretty no. sure so once in a while you have to, right? What I do, um, I negotiate. I make negotiations and one thing that you have to do sorry y'all y'all not gonna like this but a lot of times when you working in a service industry as hard as the music industry you kind of got to mind fuck people into letting them feel like it was their idea you kind of got to plant seeds in people's head about better situations so that they think about it and ponder and it's like aha i got an idea well, yeah you do you. have an it's idea it's easy for you to do it because i'm sorry to say it not being sexist but you're a woman <laughs> woman can make a man or anybody else Think something that they ain't thought of at Almost. all. Almost. See, in this game, we are the slept on. It's either you sleeping on a woman or you gonna fear a woman in business most times, honestly. Because if you're sleeping on you sleeping on it because all you see is a female with a nice body, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I can probably fuck her and get what I want tomorrow. Some niggas, they really go for it like that. Been in that position too many times and every time they get blasted, cussed out, and picked that to the point of no return. But then you have that certain select people where they fear a woman in business. Not because we're going to do every, anything wrong, but because we're going to do everything right. Because we're going to cross our eyes. I mean, cross our T's and dot our eyes. She was right the first time. We're <laughs> she was going to cross, cross her eyes. Well, yeah, because you know, crossing at the top and the bottom, you know. And she was also right. She going to roll her eyes at you. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to roll them one good time. But a lot of them, they, they, they fear us. They, and you'll hear, like, I heard a lot of men that I actually look up to, like, mogul mindset and people like that who I just kind of follow. I don't necessarily talk to these people daily, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not a part of anything that they have going on, but they set a tone. They set a, they set a path that's working. So when you kind of see the footprints in the sand and you know that they're going on that same road less traveled by, it's okay to walk beside those footprints and kind of see the formula and see what's going on. It's okay to reach out, because I'll reach out to mogul anytime, like, I got a question, and I might just ask him, and he'll go ahead and answer that question and keep it moving you know what i'm saying like he's one of the few who will actually share his knowledge and love you feel me so like a lot of other people they fear that i've had guys that i've wanted to work with who have told me straight up like i only want to work with you because you're a woman because i know that you're gonna keep everything in line because i know you don't have a problem telling people no or keeping you know x y and z together so i'm just like i don't know if i want to take this business off because i don't know if i'm your trophy or if i'm actually doing a business. Well, i heard you say today i want you to tell me you, right now, I have Miss Deja on T. Right. When Who's you got who? here, that was Kiyosha. Kiyosha? Yes. That was, that is my first name. Um, those are two different people. Like, and as crazy as it sounds, I had to learn, like, for my mental standard, you know what I'm saying? How to separate my personal feelings and principles from my business feelings and principles. So I had to separate those two with my name. Kiosha is really outspoken. Kiosha is who you're doing this interview with in a sense. You know what I'm saying? The goofy laughing. I thought, that. This was, I thought that was Dejan. See, Dejan is the good answers you get, but the goofy laughing, yeah, that's see, that's me. That's my personality. Oh, great. Basically, every every great business woman in the world has two personalities. They you have to, though. You really have to because when I first stepped into this, I found myself upset a lot because I'm a person who's based on principle, you know what I'm saying? So it might not be that you did or did not do something. It may be the principle behind why you did or did not do it. You know what I'm saying? So, so I had to learn so quick. But technically you just basically said, so in layman's terms, which one is the hood? Dejan yeah. is that bitch. Okay. Kiosha can be a bitch. It's a difference. <laughs> 
all my female viewers, you might understand that. Um, I don't. Dejan <laughs> is that that bitch. When she get dressed, she's in the mirror like, I, I do I look like something to play with today? No, good. I look important? Okay, cool, let's go. Like, when I walk into a room, it's my goal to turn every head in that room. Like, and I even, when I first started, one of the things I told my brother is, you know, we step out, pay attention. Like, keep your eyes on my surroundings. One of the keys to this is to draw people to me. When people get drawn to me, they ask me who I am, I tell them who you are. It works. Any upcoming events coming up? Yes, um, February 29th, I will be doing an event at Hollywood in Walterboro, South Carolina. Um, it's going to be my first showcase of the year. Um, with this one, I usually do my first ones. I usually do some type of giveaways and some type of prizes. Like I said, I try to make all my shows beneficial to the artists. So sometimes I'm offering free studio time. Sometimes I'm offering the photo shoot. Sometimes it's a whole combo, dude. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then, what's today? The... <laughs> The 20th. 26. Okay, so yeah, boom. All right, so my birthday Sunday. That's another event. <laughs> but um, on the seventh, well, no, the ninth, we have the South Carolina Underground Music Awards. Will Gordon will be performing there as well and as Beach. a nominee. Myrtle Beach Crown Reef. If you have not voted, vote for the squad. You can um, vote every day, right? Every day, up every until day. February first. And you can use multiple email addresses. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but also, not just her, I have to promote everybody, so. Shout out to Colors, that's my boy, long time ENT, shout out to those to watch, shout out to everybody that has been on this show so far. She did it for me already. You guys are awesome, you guys are awesome, we the ones that make South Carolina turn, In man. In fact, so Colors show just came on this past week. I know, I was watching for you guys. Oh. <laughs> okay. I know, thank you. <laughs> before you came. But now, also, um. How can people get in contact with you? Like, of course, everything everything will be on the bottom, but just give us a little rundown of everything that. Give um, us a little rundown of what they can get in contact with. Okay, let's see. Hold on, let me finish the shows because that was my time. So, the seventh, we got the South Carolina Underground Music Awards. Look, Gordon is performing there. February the 29th, um, we're going to be doing a the first SC Indie Grind Show 2020 out at Hollywood in Walterboro, South Carolina. Y'all already know how my shows are. I'm telling you, we going up. Um, then in March, on March the March 14th through the 18th, um, my entire team we will be going to South by Southwest. At first, it started as just you know we had our own segment. It turned into having our own stage. So Dejan T Management Showcase is actually one of the official stages within the Momentum South by Southwest field. Um, so if you're there. March 16th is our actual show, which is the very first night we are doing one of the opening shows for Opening Night of South by Southwest. Um, that's what we're really, really focused on right now. And to contact me, um, I'm on Facebook, Dejon T at D A J O N T E E, and on IG at Dejon.T Management. And then I'm also on Twitter at Dejon T. So everything pretty much, if you type in Dejon T, you're going to find me because there ain't too many people with that name. Okay, <laughs> Now, anything else you want to say to the few people right now? Um, the only thing I can really say, man, honestly, is shout out to you for providing the platform. A lot of people, they want to do these interviews. They strive to do these interviews. I know I'm still struggling with my platform right now because we had to switch everything. I was doing it on Facebook because I love that it was interactive. I could talk to the people, like, you know what I'm saying? And then people started reporting me. Like, reported every single one of my positive posts. They reported all my shows. And I'm talking about I had over 1K viewers on my shows. They reported all my stuff. So I decided to stop doing it on Facebook and move it to YouTube. So I salute you for being able to actually do this, you know what I'm saying, and have fun with it. Because a lot of people after a while, they don't have fun doing this anymore. Um, shout out to everybody I work with. LBS Two Turn, shout out to my squad. The whole Dejan T roster. I'm not about to name all y'all churn. That was my baby job. Um, <laughs> shout out to DJ Surplus. Shout out to everybody that's out here really, really, really making moves. Like, support your people. There is nothing more important in South Carolina right now than the support. If we could back each other the way that these other states are backing each other, y'all, we are on. We are it right now. But the reason why it's not working out because is because when people are coming in to see how we're on, they're seeing that we're competing with each other and not trying to boost each other. So, I mean, who the hell really wants to work with that? That shows that you can't be a team player. A label is a team. You can't go into a situation like that thinking that you've already made it. Like, get out here and perfect your craft. Everybody don't deserve to be paid for a feature or a show. Perfect your craft. Build your fan base, get your stuff registered, and do what you gotta do, y'all. That's all I got, man. I can be reached anywhere. Follow the squad. Pull up at one of the shows, even if you're not gonna perform.
just come and pull up and have a good time with us. I promise you'll enjoy yourself. Well, thank you so much for joining the show. And stay tuned for the next episode where we will be featuring whoever else is next. I will announce it as soon as possible. Remember, on Wednesdays and Fridays at 12 o'clock p.m., it will be a premiere countdown followed by, by the show itself. All her information will be on the bottom. And you have a good night. Good night, you guys. You can know your song, please. Don't need no apologies. Stop trying to get quiet, please. Don't come if you hate. Don't you come around me. Yeah, I said, don't you come around me. Side nigga, rep the same blocks. Ain't never changed size, nigga. Gliding through the city, I be feeling like Clyde, nigga. Stayed away from haters, I ain't never had to hide, nigga. This is how we ride, nigga. We just want the money. Watch your old lady, we might fuck up on your honey. Playing with the beat, but if we want it, then we own it. Trying to feed the family and show them better moments. Yeah, yeah, I swear, one come a missing, then they all going stupid. And they ain't showing no love, care, care less about Cupid. Hit my brother up, I know that he gon' shoot you a cute. I hit up loafing, I swear, he gon' have you so booty. I'm trying to take where I'm from and spread it all through the nation. Put that on life, we all gon' make it if we grind and stay patient. I swear, I'm thinking about my people and I'm gon' make a way. And this still free my dogs until they all out in concentration. You can know your song, please. Don't need no apologies. I'm trying to get quality, please. Don't come if you hate. Don't you come around me. Yeah, I said, don't you come around me. Surviving off corner stoves and four for foes. Nah, they don't want that. Know that. They don't want that. I won't spend that when I'm on that. I got a gift for niggas believing me. So I ain't on that. Back dead broke. Kicking doors. Nah, they don't want that. Surviving off corner stoves and four for foes. Nah, they don't want that. They don't want that. I won't spend that when I'm on that. I got a gift for niggas believing me. So I ain't known that Look, I never had a bag Not a real bag One that I grind for Yeah, I done had a bag Real big bag Got done sung that iron for I don't see dying, no Niggas gon' have to make me a believer a Nigga tried to get off Hit me in my hand But why you do that to your people? <laughs> we are not equal And I don't give a fuck what you bang You niggas deceitful And I don't give a fuck about your stain I'ma stand ten toes Dick deep Bitch gon' have to see me I do it on CD Or put that microwave on repeat I'm jamming And I don't care what it is that I can hustle with You niggas finessing and I'm on some cut though shit Be right there to help you run it up Then slap you with the two The day you leave your two You ain't heard about bloody bruh Back dead broke Kicking doors, nah, they don't want that. Surviving off corner stoves and four for foes, nah, they don't want that. They don't want that. I won't spend that when I'm on that. I got a gift for niggas believing me. So I ain't on that.